All right, thanks for staying with us now. The growing competition in the global market, the need for innovation, and the desire to retain top talents are priority for any company that is interested in scaling their business. Companies need to hone employees' talent to stay competitive in the ever-changing business landscape. And by investing in employee development, companies can ensure that their employees have the skills and knowledge they need to succeed in the future. Now, this can lead to increased productivity, innovation, and customer satisfaction. These days, some companies in Nigeria are increasingly paying attention to honing employees' talent. They do this by providing formal training um, programs, creating opportunities on the job, um, learning, encouraging employees to take professional development courses, creating a culture of learning and development and pairing employees with mentors. Now, so today we are asking with respect to higher learning, how can um, companies or businesses or employees start to hone their employees' talent? Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. All right, so, um, you can X or sorry, not tweet. There's no longer tweet. <laughs> I was just going to ask you guys two, two seconds, right? Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on. Let me come to Jennifer, because mm. you know be 9 to 5. Let me go to Jennifer. <laughs> yeah. uh, so how do you feel as, as an employee, right, when, when your employers are, like, very deliberate or intentional about taking you for, like, training courses, like, paying for... I've seen employees, like, employers pay for, like, um, MBAs for their staff and all of that. How does it, that make you feel? Do you feel like you, you, you do better in that company or you, you're just waiting to learn and just run away? Because a lot of employers are afraid of that. No, I actually, I actually really appreciate it, right? Um, when I see companies who don't take out time um, to allocate resources to train their employees, I'm very skeptical about them, right? Um, the previous company where I was working, I worked in an enterprise. And if there is anything that I would say about that company is the fact that what you would learn on the job in the space of one year, people who have 10 years experience can't even be on the same level as you, right? Because... Every two weeks, you're learning something. If a month goes by and you haven't gotten a new certificate or you haven't learned something, then it's from you because there's always something to learn. They're always calling you for trainings. There's training today. There's training for the next two weeks. There's training. There's no break. You have to learn because they want all the employees to be equipped because there's project every month. There's project every month. So you have to deliver. You have to deliver. And if you get to a point where you can't deliver, yeah, mm -hmm. you're going to be let go, definitely. You know, I, I would say, oh, because it seemed as though you kind of disregarded um, entertainment field. Wait, I, I was coming back oh, for yeah. you now. Uh, now I said you're not 9 to 5. I'm not saying you do not train. I have brought myself back. <laughs> <laughs> I was coming back to you. Go ahead. So, now, the thing is, in film and entertainment, you also invest in people. For instance, I know that Mo Abudu has raised a lot of people. You know, and Bolanli some Austin of Peters. Uh, Bolanli Austin Peters, mm -hmm. too. Kulia um, Folayo, Kulia Folayo, yes. Kemi, I did, a lot of them are investing in people. People. and the reality is the people that you raise will not always be there with you like they give them some graduate from their film school and they tell them okay you be the producer for this major project just throw them out in the field there and they'll learn on the job but at the end of the day some of these people that they have trained have also left to either start their own mm -hmm. or or go on and join you know people that will pay them more mm -hmm. you know so it's it's yeah so i was coming back to you don't worry i have you i got you <laughs> we are in the same field i hope you you forget that i'm still in the media and yeah. in this industry. so i remember watching a video where kadi b said something she said that and this is where i really love the conversation we're having today because mm -hmm. again i started a course i will, I will expose myself on national television <laughs> we, we will go there but i remember kadi b saying something around that no matter what you want to study on earth mm -hmm. today Whatever you are studying, make sure there's a business attached to the course. If it is engineering, add business maybe as a minor. If it is whatever, just add it, you understand? You know, because now she's now beginning to see that she has so much money, but she has zero knowledge when it comes to business management. And this is where I think that entertainers, right? Because mm -hmm. sometimes when people say go and get an MBA, they don't think that is important. But the truth is, if you understand that what you are as a person, mm -hmm. as an entertainer, you are a business. So if you begin to treat yourself as a business, it's going to be different from somebody that's just treating yourself, oh, I'm, I'm passionate about this. You yeah. know? So I, I get you. So even if um, maybe there's no like 
a formal person you work under, mm -hmm. you are your own boss or whatever, you still need to be. That's why now most entrepreneurs are going under management. Mm -hmm. And you see most management companies are also attaching this um, programs, these trainings to their package for their, yeah, that for their talent true. so that, that they can, true. you know, get them. Because you will sit at negotiation tables. What will you be discussing? You really must have the skill and the knowledge to be able to have right. and hold those kind of strong negotiations. Mm -hmm. All right, so on that note, let me bring in our guests. Miss Ogawa Ine is the Dynamic Country Director for Nexford University in Nigeria. She has over 14 years of experience solving business problems across several industries, including higher education, financial services, capital market, and oil and gas. Her expertise includes visioning, corporate strategy, metric setting, and program delivery. OG, otherwise known, <laughs> served as the Director of Project Management Office of the Nigerian University of Technology and Management, uh, where she led the project team to launch and grow the startup university for over three and a half years. And we're very glad to have her in studio with us this evening to discuss education. So, <laughs> thank you so much, OG, for joining us this evening. Thank you. Well, thank I mean, you. so I heard you just, I mean, rather I saw you with my side eye, you know, just nodding when we're talking, right? The conversation is around higher learning and we're speaking to employees, right? Um, how do we get employees to bring out their ultimate best? Um, but before we go to that level, I just wanted you to quickly pick on maybe a few challenges. Because some, somebody will look at this topic and say, I beg, it does not apply to me. But I know that there are so many gaps that we've seen in so many companies that some are smart enough now to realize that, no, this thing, we need to solve the problem and this is the way to solve the problem. And they are contacting people like you to say, please, what courses do you have available to be able to train my people to get them better? Most schools are doing it now, especially the, the you know, um, most universities, right? They're doing it, they're sh creating short, short programs to ensure that they're able to, to bridge that gap. So, I mean, in your, in your experience in the educational sector, what do you think those challenges are, you know, in the educational sector that would require that after I have gotten a BSc or something, I need to see go back again and say, you know what, let me go and get um, some level of higher learning from an institution so that I get better at my job. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ua. I mean, when you start talking about challenges, I'm sure you know we can be here, you know, for, 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 for many hours. But let's just start with the structure through which these employees you're talking about, you know, where they've come through, and that structure for the last decades, right? Um, we're talking about a structure that has been fundamentally underfunded, and without funding, it means you cannot maintain the learning environment. Uh, without funding, it, mean, it means you cannot hire you know, the best faculty to deliver, to deliver some of these learnings. Um, in terms of the technology and the learning tools, right, so whether that be software to deliver certain technical training, again, funding. So fundamentally, funding you know, you know, has really held you know, higher learning back and it's been doing that for decades. So when somebody then comes through that structure, that it's limited in terms of who is teaching, in terms of the curricula, right? And you know, its ability to have kept up with the changes that are going on in terms of tools, um, you can begin to understand how the gap is then created between who's come out of the you know, university mm -hmm. and what businesses who are moving a million miles an hour and technology is changing every day. Um, you can begin to see how that gap is then created, you know? And, and, and that's just on the side of the supply, right? When we now look at organizations on their own end, um, that struggle to even adjust, adjust to the generational shift that we're seeing, right? So if your organization, at least for the larger ones, for the older ones, is set up to look, to, to look after a different generation, mm -hmm. so in terms of how you remunerate, right, in terms of what you think motivates a person, um, you just need to take people from two different generations, you know, this current generation and the generation before, and what, you know, the patients, uh, what keeps them motivated, you know, um, person from my generation might want, might enjoy seeing something for long and seeing it through, and then there's someone from a different generation who, Tell let's say, short, <laughs> snappy, um, and, and, and so organizations even being prepared to make that shift to adjust to 
the current changes. to the changes in, in terms of in terms of generation is also a challenge in, in terms of that mismatch. Mm. Awesome. Jennifer. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Your generation. <laughs> if you want to stay for the longer <laughs> So someone like me, right, when it comes to when it comes to learning, I like it very short and precise, right? And um I, I realized that when it comes to um harnessing my skills, I like hands on experience, yeah. right? And I also know that um like you said, expenses funding, when it comes to hands on experience, it's it's a lot more expensive to do that for most companies. It also depends on the industry that you're that you're working with. But then when you have a company, I mean, what would be your expert um, advice, right, for companies who are probably working with or who have employees like me who want hands-on experience? How, how do they navigate a situation like that? There are several strategies to apply after you accept the reality, right, mm -hmm. in terms of what's going on in terms of the demographic in your organization, right? One of the key things you can start to do is structure your work in a way that it's kind of project-based mm -hmm. because then that would appeal to somebody like you, for example, mm -hmm. who you want to do things short and sweet. So you can, rather than having people just work on the same thing for a long period of time that may have been okay in the past, now you might need to structure work in a way that it's kind of project-based and so that you, know, you can start and finish and then you've moved on to something else. So the excitement of knowing that, okay, I will soon finish this and I'm going to start something else keeps you motivated. So that's you know, one thing um, that uh, companies could do to keep a person like you's attention. And of course, like I mentioned before about remuneration, Right, so this idea of you know rewards waiting till the end of the year for a person like you that may not apply. So the same thing that gets you to want to do things in short bust, you also want the rewards in short bust. Mm. So there might be a world where you can then adjust how you remunerate, right? So that thing you do and keep all the way to the end of the year, is there a way where you do this much more frequent mm. um, performance reviews and let the rewards you know accompany short burst as well. Mm. So that's an, you know, those are some of the strategies that companies could apply. So that makes sense, right? Um, I mean, if you remember at the beginning of um, when it was brought in the topic, she had mentioned how um, smaller businesses are really, really at a disadvantage uh -huh. when it comes to um, training their employees because some of these employees, after they are trained, a month or two months, they're gone, uh -huh. right? And people are very skeptical. What if I train, I mean, if you have just five employees, I train all five of them and well, before the end of the year, three of them are gone, right? But then we also know that it is important for you to train your employees. Uh -huh. So how, how do people, or how do companies find the balance? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. How do you find balance, right, between should I train or should I not train? Mm. I think um, the jury is still out on that. So I think companies <laughs> are still trying to answer that question. But while they are trying to answer the question yeah. to Uwa's point, so if you don't train them and they stay, that's a much more expensive bet, mm. right? So I don't think that any company has fully figured out, you know, um, how to ensure they don't leave. So I think for now it's a reality that all companies are living with to say, I'm going to train and I'm going to lose some but it's much more expensive that I don't train and yeah. then they stay in my business, mm. right? So I think that's really the priority for, for companies at the moment to say, how do I ensure that everyone that I do have while they're with me is creating value and definitely not destroying value, right? So. Interesting. Okay, so for me, I would like to look at it from like prioritization, right? So a lot of times... It, in church, for, for instance, you'll see people come up to give testimonies. Oh, they've been sending other people to training and they never sent me to training. And now it's finally my turn and they sent me to training. So um, in the workspace, there is always this, it's like a beef or something about, oh, why did they send you ahead of me for your training as though? So my question is, how do you handle prioritization of employers' who needs? To, who yeah, who to send per as time. A company, exactly. We're gonna speak to a company now, who would you say your should be other priority in terms of recommending mm -hmm. who to go for the kind of like the courses you offer? Mm. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> First of all, you are talking to a corporate strategist. Okay. So everything, you know, a person like me does comes from the heart of what is the strategy, strategy that we're pursuing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, you know, I, you know, we've talked about how you want to know, no matter what the company tells you their strategy is, mm -hmm. go and look at their income statement, what mm -hmm. they spend money on, that's their strategy. Mm -hmm. So when you don't have a strategy on how to uh, you know, realize your goals, the priorities will be clear and your training will reflect that, 
right? Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's the only thing that makes sense. So your strategy will naturally prioritize those initiatives that are going to drive you know, the most growth or give you the, you know, the most income or whatever other strategic objective that you mm -hmm. have. So once that is the case, that dictates who gets trained. And um, when I say dictates who gets trained, it dictates who gets trained in the context of the skills that exist. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not training for the sake of training. Yeah. You are training because you've taken a strategy, mm -hmm. you've looked at the resources you have, you've looked at the gaps, and you're just simply using the training to close gaps or to continuously develop. So in this issue of training, it also depends. Is this a continuous development issue? Is this a gap that I have in my organization that I'm trying to close? Mm -hmm. So, you know, so again, I, for me, strategy dictates um, your priority. So it's never really an emotional decision. Like it's, a lot um, of people believe I, I do, it is. I do not think that any business leader makes that decision, at least not in the private sector, yeah. uh, makes that decision on emotions. It is driven by business needs, strategic objectives. And, okay. and yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go on a very short break. I have... We want to delve very quickly into this um, um, conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're having a very interesting conversation, right? And we are discussing the issue around how employees can begin to hone the talents of the employers, right? How do you start to invest in the employer through higher learning? And we have with us OG. She is the country director, right, I believe, <laughs> for Nextford University. And she's live with us in studio. Now, please let's share what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 So I was going to say that, okay, so I want to go back to Nextford University. Let me mention their name. So I started the course. I've done the pre-something because I don't have a business background. I was supposed to start my MBA and I went on the pause. Um, online learning is not a joke. You know, sometimes when people hear online learning, they think that it's something that is just a walk in the park. But the, the programs you guys offer is quite intense. In fact, my sister just graduated. So she's, she, she told me, and literally, I tried to peek into what she's doing. It's completely nowhere near what I did. So I'm now wondering, even in the space of like a year, that spe the speed at which everything is changing, right? It gives me some kind of, kind of piece that whatever it is that I'm learning, I know that it's going to be relevant for a very long time. So that's one hand. But you don't hear companies like Facebook telling you that they don't need degrees anymore, they don't need certifications anymore, right? A lot of companies are now focusing on soft skills and all of that, right? So for someone that offers those kinds of sophisticated kind of learning, right, how do you balance that? You know, I mean, from a strategist point of view, let me even go to your field very well. How do you balance it that, you know, some companies are saying they don't need degrees anymore, while some companies are just, you know, they're just indifferent. And this, this, the pace at which even the degrees that you learned maybe two years ago, if you go back to learn it again, completely far from where, what you did two years ago, there's just something changing. It's evergreen and it's, it's at the, on a fast pace. So how do you, do you manage some of these, um, what I call them challenges or so, that, that comes with learning as, you know, as a, uh, whatever time people, flies, yeah, as time the, as the time is moving, how do you ba man balance that? Okay, um, I'm, and I'm glad you mentioned the Oxford <laughs> University. So for us, right, uh, one of our fundamental beliefs is the issue of um, that education is no longer that thing that um, is about stage of life. I'll do secondary school, I'll do uni, I'll graduate, I'll marry, I'll never go to school again, I will not retire, and that you know, I'll work, and that I'll not work, I will not retire. So. Um, we don't, we don't see learning like that anymore. We, in fact, half of the reason, the experience, the way it is, is that we want you to relearn how to learn, mm. right? And see learning as a lifelong journey, right? It's, it's just not practical for mm. it to be a start and stop issue. It's just a journey. Um, so that's, that's one thing on, on, the, on, the, learning. on the learning, on the learning part. Um, on the, you, and it, it's both ways, actually. So you as well, the student who is now a lifelong student, it's the same mindset, right? So we, in terms of an institution like ours, our job is to continuously refresh that content. And sometimes it's not that the content has changed per se, it's the application of it, 
right? And it's it's bringing what Scenarios. has exactly it's it's bringing this thing that you've learned before and teaching you how to apply in it way. in the scenarios that are coming up. So that's our job. But for you, the learner, it's that it's having that mindset that learning is now a lifelong journey and intentionally saying, I'll be back. You know, mm -hmm. I'll be back. It's just going to be another year, a couple of years, three years, five years, I'll be back. And then our job is to be waiting for you with those scenarios to, you know, to teach you to apply. Mm -hmm. So there's no one size fits all. And then um, in terms of companies as well, just like strategy, I mean, it's different. It's, um, there are different organizations. Within public sectors, there are different types of public sector companies. Within private sector, different types. So different people are going to have different needs. There is no silver bullet mm -hmm. on how to get people ready to work in. I mean, when you have conversations about uh, with uh, manufacturing companies and how they have to train their people, it's a completely different conversation to education and how they have to train their people. Mm. So it's, it's just the reality. So, so speaking to what I said around Facebook, right, mm -hmm. as an example, mm -hmm. do you see us gravitating to a kind of educational or higher learning structure where, so for instance, I'm in the media space, I really don't need certain kinds of knowledge that universities like yours will begin to prefer tailored um, learning mm -hmm. for people just specific to the needs of those people. Do you mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. Do you see that as a much more effective style of learning mm -hmm. that will bring a lot more impact, you know, based on the strategy that you talked about? Because mm -hmm. if I really don't need a Jennifer, for instance, I don't need her in my organization, but I need a Sansi. But I need to give Sansi the right kind of, uh, what's it called, media or maybe business media mindset training that will bring that will make sure that she's bringing value to my company. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, do you see us navigating the educational structure towards that level? We are already there. Oh, so nice. that is in so at, at our university, mm. that is our mindset. So that's why I, I had to tell you about that fundamental belief about lifelong learning. So. How, do, how What does that look like in real life is what you just described. So if we believe that it's lifelong learning, the only way to do that is to allow learning to be modular. You know, learn what you need per time. But again, just like with all transformations, all transitions, things just don't go sharply from one way to another, right? In today's world, there is still a need for structured learning, which is what we refer to as degrees and things like that. Mm -hmm. So when, you know, when a... Um, if Facebook says, I don't need degrees, perhaps there's context around it. Mm. What skills or what What's roles were you referring to mm. that you don't need degrees for? Mm. I doubt you would allow your chief executive to say you don't need a degree or you know, no kind of formal management training. It would be difficult because some skills and mindsets and ways of thinking will be missing. Mm. So again, all of these things are all contextual. Right, there will still be roles that require that kind of structure. You know, there's with everything, there's the benefits, and the pros and cons, and there will be all these roles that still require structured formal training because there's a benefit that comes with that. There is a method to learning mm -hmm. from that. There is a method to thinking in that regard, and then there are going to be these other roles that you talked about where a formal structured degree is not necessary. But because we see learning as a lifelong journey, you will still require that modular approach where you're learning what you need per time, but over the course of a lifetime, they kind of stack up and then still become this larger body of knowledge mm -hmm. that you have kind of over a lifetime, you know, so. Okay. Okay. So um, let's talk about chat GPT mm -hmm. <laughs> and the fact that artificial intelligence is taking the world by storm and a lot of people are getting to like embrace uh, chat GPT because of the level of assistance it gives mm -hmm. right so I would ask do you consider um, that app uh, a challenge to like the structural courses that you offer in your institution because for instance if I'm able to get knowledge of chat GPT I can then operate it to handle almost almost everything <laughs> right. No, not really. Okay, well, not really. let's hear you. Uh, not really. I mean, the, the, all of these tools, they're enablers, right? Mm -hmm. They don't always come and replace something else. Sometimes they help. They just make it more efficient. Um, I, I doubt through ChatGPT you're going to learn how to perform certain surgeries. Now, you can learn the thing that enables you to build the robots to do the surgery, mm -hmm. but it, there are just some things that require um, sometimes peer-to-peer -peer learning, mm -hmm. that require... Um, 
a structured way of delivering that knowledge, right? Because when you are inter interacting with that knowledge for the first time, mm -hmm. it's new to you. So there's something that comes when we talk about this person is a seasoned faculty and mm -hmm. all of that. It means that yeah. they have, over the years, this same content delivered it to hundreds of people. They know how to get you to grasp the concept in a consistent way as well, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we've, we've talked about how that's dangerous good. people with um, half knowledge is. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what structured learning does. It, it makes sure that, okay, when we all leave this class, we all have relative the same understanding and when we go out there into the world we will apply it in a similar way so i am mm -hmm. not saying you cannot self-learning is is here to stay you know people can learn a whole discipline on youtube right but you will find that even those people they would when they get the chance to get mentored by someone who's mm -hmm. more experienced they will tell you that okay i was not i learned it but that mentorship helped Mm -hmm. That mentorship happens with your faculty sometimes. You just don't realize it's happening because they are, mm -hmm. they are filtering how you're learning that, that thing. Mm -hmm. They are pacing it. They are timing it. Mm -hmm. And you are building on top of it. You are sometimes practicalizing it after you've learned the theory mm -hmm. and all of that. Those things, you, you know, sometimes we take it for granted. So, yes, you're right. Knowledge is there. It's like Google. It's mm -hmm. there. But it's the manner in which you take it in and right. whether you are a professional at sieving through all of that information mm -hmm. and then capturing the knowledge in the best way possible without you know perverting it and then yeah. applying it wrong and things like that so mm -hmm. i don't see chat gpt as a challenge i i think it's a very welcome tool but it is just that it's a tool an enabler is it is an enabler is a right. tool to save us time okay. is a tool to <laughs> to help us generate even better ideas mm -hmm. but once you know it's like you know when we joke um in nigeria about copying and you know even when it's that was what you say something that you think that's very honorable like literally you know yeah. 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 it can't replace you can't replace yes. thinking you can't replace critical thinking it can't replace mm -hmm. application and yeah. it can't replace you know, ChatGPT won't just link itself straight into a scenario. Mm -hmm. It just give you facts. You mm -hmm. know what it is. It's analyzing lots of data at at, at, at incredible speed, mm -hmm. so you can have it. But you will still have to apply it to your scenario. Mm -hmm. If not, that's why the gap is going to show. It's going to expose. Yeah. So there is this other challenge I have with um, structural learning, which um, I mean, I, I guess it's a Nigerian thing because of like the system of education that we operate in Nigeria. It's kind of like okay, let me do this and get the degree and then just mm -hmm. submit the degree to show that, okay, you need a degree, here is the degree, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I'm not quite sure how to frame that question, but I was, I was, I was, I was the relevance of degree, yeah. So I, I went through your website, right? Artificial intelligence, that's for the undergraduate degrees, business analytics, digital marketing, digital transformation, entrepreneurship, international business, product management, supply chain management, Applied science and business. I look at it and say, hmm, these are not the kind of courses where you go see for the regular university, mm -hmm. right? Is it possible that these things are really deliberate, they're intentional? Because again, we all, we, they do product management, I mean, like project <laughs> management online. So people are deliberately looking for these kinds of courses. And these, the people that study these kind of courses are not the people that just want to pass, just get a certificate for certificate's sake. They already understand that the world is moving towards some of these discipline mm -hmm. and if i learn this you know i mean now we learn with calculating the salary mm -hmm. you have looked at it i said okay do you know product managers this is how much they earn stem research yes, this know, is how much they I, like, earn like literally so mm -hmm. when i saw the courses especially for the undergraduate ones that you offer I said, mm -hmm. I mean, these people are actually very so is there is there a strategy to why these are the subject because these are the courses that naturally people will just go online uh -huh. say they want to go and study. So yeah. now you are making it a degree. Uh -huh. So that someone just comes out and immediately. So to answer this question around certification, these are not the kind of courses that I just want to get a certificate. Make, make I already make I pass, uh -huh. which is what we did when we were growing up. I uh mean, -huh. going to university, regular mm -hmm. universities. Uh -huh. So why is this? What what strategy is behind this, and why? Okay, so we'll go back to the <laughs> network university mission, yeah. right, which is about that creating you know, economic and social mobility for Nigerians, Africans, young people you know, around the world. So if we are focused on creating that economic and social mobility, it means that whatever education we're delivering, it is important that that education immediately starts to earn you know, income for the people that we're, we're training. So for that to be the case, it means that we have to go into the workplace 
and we, we find out from them what are your problems, gaps. what are your gaps. Mm -hmm. And those programs you're seeing are structured around the gaps we found in industry. And then we design the programs accordingly, and then we invite you know, young people to say, listen, are you after, you, 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 you're looking, you're, for you to be searching, you're clearly looking to develop yourself anyway. Mm -hmm. What we have now done is that should you have this interest, this passion, should you by yourself have even identified that companies are looking for this sort of skill set and these gaps exist, then what we have now done is really understood that gap and structured the learning in a way that from the day you graduate, that company can use you. That's our own. It's important to us. That's at the core of our strategy. Right. Right. So that's the way. It's, that's so why that's the way it is. Direct impact on the. It's, yeah. The, well, we don't exist for any other reason. Mm. We exist for that reason. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we exist for that reason. Mm -hmm. It's for it's that we said. Listen, the issue of access to high quality education yeah. is not something that is only for you know, a, a small number of people. We are millions in Nigeria. We are millions across the continent. How do we make this education kind of accessible? So that pe more people. So yes, education is it's, it's a it's a passport. It's a passport to move yes. across the ladder. Yeah. So, but that passport does not need to be some guarded, mm. you know, um, kind of um, ticket. So, uh, you know, our mission is to make that as accessible as possible to as many people as possible. Yes. So that's why we design the programs awesome. that way. Awesome. Right. So, um, one thing that I I just want to bring it back home a little bit, right, to the employee um, side of things. Um, I know that sometimes in some organizations, it might be some form of a, maybe competition, mm -hmm. right, where people are really trying their best to climb up the ladder, mm -hmm. right? And um, for some people, you know that you're getting more promotions or you're assigned more projects to work on because you have vast knowledge mm -hmm. because you've gained more um, more skills you've had more experience now how do employees position themselves to be picked to go for trainings to be picked to be equipped by their organizations it's quite a simple answer a view. <laughs> make yourself relevant yeah. mm -hmm. make yourself relevant nobody sees someone that can create value and looks away yeah. when there's work the work is plenty right. so you need if you can identify people so if you can do the work and somehow your employers, your leadership cannot recognize it, it's on you. Okay. You've either not made sufficient sacrifices or you haven't demonstrated what you have. Or maybe you think you have it because if you have it, even great leaders spot things in you that you don't even realize mm -hmm. that you have. Mm -hmm. So really, it's about making yourself relevant. Anything that has to do with you progressing, the, the, it's on you. You have to do the work. Mm -hmm. you, you have to figure out what your strengths are. You have to figure out what the needs of your organization is, and you have to figure out how do I make my re myself relevant to those needs, yeah, the needs of the organization. I, I mean, it also even speaks to what Sanzi said, so, because yeah. now if you now follow strategy based on Sanzi's and the answer you gave to Sanzi, if you've already positioned yourself as somebody that is relevant to the economy, mm -hmm. you'll be the first on the list yeah. mm -hmm. for that training. But someone says, hi, good evening. I know OG from her previous work at NUTM. My question for her today is, for some people who are self-employed, how is Nextford um, offer, how is Nextford offering them, offer relevant to them? How, is, how, how are your offers relevant for, for people who are self-employed? Self like us? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, at Nextford, we have different programs. Like I said, you don't cater to one. You, you have a whole portfolio of, co of clients or customers, and they are all segmented. Mm -hmm. So they are the ones that and MBAs was relevant to them. There are others that an undergraduate degree. Like I said, remember, we're getting people, we want people to get educated in a manner where they can start working today. Mm. So if employers today still require, remember, these are policies, years old policies that says, oh, we only hire people with a degree. Mm. We can't solve that problem now. So what we need to do is arm you with a degree, give you the skills. So we solve two things in, in that process. We arm you with the skills that we know the companies want. And if we know that many companies still require a degree, we go and get accreditation mm -hmm. to enable to, to be able to give you that degree. So we also do short courses, and which is why we have um, we, we do our best to kind of work with companies, right? And I know he, um, yeah, he's our yes. <laughs> for us that are like small companies aspiring to become big companies, right? Um, because I know that you do a lot. Because mm -hmm. I remember that um, how I got to hear about you guys was from a friend of. Uh, as Alero, mm -hmm. you know, she was then with Sterling and all of that. So mm -hmm. I just, I just kept. I said, I, I like this thing; it's interesting. And because I'm self-employed, the only course I could start 
was the MBA, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, and I know that the way the structure is, first of all, it's a monthly payment, it's quite flexible, so it's not something that is strenuous. And you did not only stop at that, there was, there was a time you partnered with a telecom company to even give out data. So if data is your problem, yeah. <laughs> there's data to be able to study yeah. the cost. I mean, I, I, I saw all that package, so it just got me thinking that, I, I mean, I've been interested, you know, with you guys for a long time because I saw that this is like a breath of fresh air. This is mm -hmm. something, this will give a bit of, um, first of all, it gives flexibility. Mm -hmm. It gives also, it breaks down all that um, bureaucracy around education mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and the issue around getting an international certification that you have to travel the cost and all of those things mm -hmm. you kind of you guys kind of like you know broke that down and gave people and the fact that you came to Nigeria because mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. of online courses that people do in Nigeria they have they they are not here they are not they don't have any presence here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they are actually there you just do it and they send you your certification mm -hmm. but you guys actually saw that there's a lot of potential in Nigeria I mean, in the African continent, you actually brought your your machineries down mm -hmm. to set up here. So it gave me that 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 okay, yes, that we are going somewhere with you. So, but we had to say they are shouting in my ear. We have one minute, <laughs> <laughs> but really, maybe we'll bring you back because yeah. we we have to keep talking about this education matter. But in one word, if you had something to say to anybody today that is really thinking about studying, you know, how would you tell the person to approach it? Um, mindset. Mm and see education as a lifelong journey. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. you know, just see it as a lifelong journey. And um, the also relevance, mm -hmm. also relevance, right? Do the, do, do the work. Always try to assess your strengths against what you can see organizations want. And then come to people like us to arm you with it. And then you just hit the ground running. Absolutely. Sansi, mm -hmm. right. right. quickly have a comment. OK, well, yes. Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying, hashtag ways. Mm -hmm. Higher learning. How can companies hone employees' talent? There is no too much talk about this. My dear beautiful sister Jennifer made mention of someone achieving more and having more experience within a short time than a long time. She also said that someone that has achieved experience in one year may be better than someone who has used 10 years. That I agree. But all the same, there is still a learning process. Your beautiful guest made mention of someone going for a training and it is, it is through that training the person closes gaps and develops themselves and that is very true this is from daniel ilo ways regular fan <laughs> daniel will summarize our the entire life. <laughs> <laughs> he'll make a perfect summary message. writer <laughs> well thank you so much Uji. i think you'll become a friend of the house and i'm hoping that we'll be able to have more conversations around this because this is actually very relevant mm. and important for people so if you're a small company like us she has a package for you people too. so just um find where you fit in you know and I'm sure they'll be able to walk around your number of employees. Absolutely. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Sansi. Yeah. Wrap up, wrap up. We will wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go, ensure you follow us across all social media handles at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us further, drop your comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. If you missed our very important quote, here it is again. It says that the only worst um, the only thing worse than training your employees is having them leave. Uh, oh no, the only thing worse than training your employees and having them leave is not training in them and, and having them stay. It's dicey. It was very important. <laughs> it's better you have them, you train them, and they go. Mm -hmm. uh, let me put it in pidgin English so you understand it well. But we'll see you guys tomorrow um, at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Ciao.